Hey, this is Matt Baxley, a.k.a. Moot Booksley, and I'm your guest today on Music Studio Live. Rolling! <laughs> Here we go. Hi, guys. My name is Daryl. I'm a drummer and producer, and I started a podcast with my friend Sarah called Music Studio Live. Together, we talk with singer-songwriters and music makers about all things related to music. We hope you enjoy the show, and here we go. Hello, and welcome to Music Studio Live. I'm Daryl Nutt. And I'm Sarah Hattica. I always do something with my hands. I don't know why. I'm a hand person. <laughs> I don't know what that means either. You're a drummer, <laughs> that could so be you're Oh, always, I'm a drummer. Okay, that's you know, right. that's the way it is. Um, this is going to be an f- awesome episode of Music Studio. You know, I feel like I'm too excited when I say this. How about I'm going to talk like regular people talk? I'm very happy to present this episode. <laughs> that's not how I talk No, either. that's not. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I have like a 10% energy boost when I do these, when we do the podcast. Well, that's good. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. We have Matt Baxley on the episode. Yes. And he's been a friend of ours for a, quite a long time, but recently in the last year, mm-hmm. I've gotten a lot closer with him because we've been playing together um, on Wednesdays. We have a steady gig that we do as a duo. And he's a multi-instrumentalist but crazy but he plays you know regular keyboard but it's not even regular keyboard he does effects and he's got these pedals underneath him he's doing all kinds of crazy stuff with pedals he plays a synthesizer up here he plays left hand bass on this keyboard how does he do that i mean he has to just and he sings like really good his brain in six different ways i think to be able to do everything it's unbelievable it's crazy and um, he's a real deep dude in a, in a, in a good way, though. He's, he's, he's a fun-loving, mm-hmm. deep-thinking person. Um, we did two songs with him for this episode, and uh, I just... I'm just I'm just so happy to be playing music with this guy. I love playing with you, too. Don't get me wrong. But I love <laughs> making music with this guy. <laughs> uh, all right. It's a man right, crush, fine. I guess. I love you, too, Daryl. Oh, uh, see, I made her say it, I guess. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there is something I would like to bring up. Okay. Besides the Patreon. Yeah. I was actually just thinking about that oh, earlier yeah. today. It, you know, because it is like, oh, your Patreon um, subscription is renewed, you know, every right. month, basically. And it's just, it's really cool. We put all of these bloopers and fun um, extras up on this uh, platform called Patreon, and you can subscribe to it. It's $3 a month. Three bucks. And it just, it gets you kind of inside access to Music Studio Live. It's the stuff that we don't put, you know, on the... Um... It's not appropriate for the actual <laughs> show. Okay, if you want to say it like that, I was not going to... <laughs> say it that way. <laughs> That's it's, why it's fun. Right. It is. It's it's good stuff. Um, actually, I've just finished editing this episode with, that you're watching now, and there are a ton of fun moments. And oh, really? Bloopers that you and removed? silliness that are not in the show because yeah. they, were, they, were, yeah. they weren't well while we were recording for real. It was behind the scenes stuff. But there's some really funny gems on, on this. So definitely... Uh, sign up for our Patreon. Yeah, there's a lot of moments where I almost fall out of my chair and stuff. So <laughs> it's good. It's fun. And um, there, there's also a trip. Your first trip to Wawa, I think, is on the Patreon. Stuff. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was kind of fun. That, yeah, that was really. So funny. tell the people, tell all of the guys out there. Well, okay, so and ladies, how do we joke. get you? Go to Patreon.com, right? Slash and well, slash Music Studio Live. There you go. Music and Studio Live. yeah, you just go on there. It's so easy. And yeah, and it helps support us with what we're doing. Yeah, because we have no sponsors right now. Nothing. Oh, I'm so sad. I know. Oh. So if you would want to sponsor us, just uh, oh, and drop what, us an email or what something. What will help us get sponsors is if you subscribe to us on YouTube. Totally. Please. YouTube.com slash Music Studio Live and hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell. And then every time we have an episode, it'll it'll show up in your little email or yeah. Message on your phone. I don't know how people get it, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, or on um, Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe that way. So every time a new episode comes up, it just it pops up on your phone that you have yep. um, the ability to listen to something new. So it's it's and great. All of the audio versions are on all of the platforms for mm-hmm. podcasts. The video version is only on YouTube, yes. and that's that's. So if you subscribe to both, that'd be great. The audio and the video version. Yep. So I had something. Actually, on a gig with Matt last night, our yeah. guest today and I, we did a gig last night, and something very, very strange happened at the end of the night. And it, and I, I've said this before. I'm 50 years old now, <laughs> and I have had some enlightening experiences in the last six months, basically, of just 
looking at every situation in a different way. Okay. And this is what happened last night, and this is how I looked at it differently. Um, there were a few people that came in at the end of the night, and we were on fire. We were we were having a one uh, just a killer night, wonderful night. That's what I started to say. And these people were just giving us energy. We were playing. They were oh, I love that. walking around so us, good. like checking us out, watching Matt's keyboard, watching his fingers rather, and. And we were feeding off that energy, and we yeah, were on fire. Cool. It was, it was, it. That's the best feeling when that happens. And mm-hmm. we had that last Friday. Yeah, when we, we played pub, together, we fun. had that with our buddy Ray. That's on the podcast sometimes, and Jeremy. We mm-hmm. will have him on at some point. So anyway, after we finished, we we went over and talked to him. Mm-hmm. And two of the people were really awesome and really friendly and cool. And one of them just immediately out of the gate, bam, negativity. Just really? not towards us. He loved what we were doing, but he just was putting down musicians, local musicians. And I had just got off the drum set and walked over to these people excited yeah. to talk to them and just like a punch in the face. And I actually stood up for myself and I, he was talking about some of the, our friends, our local musician friends in a very, very negative way. And I just said, look, I said, I, these people are my friends and I'm meeting yeah, you for the first time and, and you're telling me all this how much you don't like my friends. I said, this yeah, is weird. weird. I said, I said, thank you for, for hanging out and, and supporting our music, but I'm, I'm walking away. And I just yeah. walked away from the guy. It was yeah. very strange. Huh. But it made me realize that there have been times, and it made me think about this on the way home. There have been times where maybe somebody um, isn't as talented as I want them to be, or they don't sing as good as I want them to sing, and they're on a gig. Mm-hmm. And maybe I've said something. And... I don't know where they are in their journey. So well, right. I have to yeah. I have to put that in the consideration that maybe, you know, let them let them feel out what they're doing. Let them let them experiment. Let them try things they can't yet do. Mm-hmm. Because I know when I was younger, I mean, well, not younger, now there's stuff I try to do and I can't right. do. Right. Absolutely. I'm not there yet and mm-hmm. I'm it's still a journey. And, you know, th- by by him being negative, it made me feel maybe I've done that in the past where I've put somebody down and and, and people walked away from me. Because I was given a negative vibe I don't off. No, I don't no. know if I could see you doing that, but well, I, you weren't I there because saying. I like the way you sing. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you though? How do you um, approach negative people, or or have you caught yourself kind of maybe? I'm because this funny. guy was coming from an ego. He was coming from right. A, a, I wonder. I, this was at Space Thirty Nine. I wonder if it's the same person that said something to me once at Space. It's 39. not the I'm same kidding. person. I'm, you told I'm me about joking. that person. Yeah, but um, anyway, you know, sometimes. I dwell on things. So if somebody tells me something that... Um, it sticks with you? Yeah, you know, and I'll think about it over and over and over again. But um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I'm just such a very... I'm a pretty positive person, so I usually let things kind of roll off. I mean, the other night I played at a country club, which generally I try to not do because those people are... Like, for some reason, country club people are automatically negative. Like, they show up to the concert... With a bad attitude, yeah, that's and true. I, and I've I'm not that sure before. why that is, but it's a trend that I've really noticed. It's like almost a sense of entitlement, and they feel that that whoever's performing needs to do something to their exact expectations. What that one person wants, yeah, whether you know how to do it or not. It's very strange. So, like the other um, evening when I was playing, actually there were these two women, and they were standing right in front of me, and they were talking about me. I don't know what they were saying, obviously, because I had my in-ear monitors in, and I couldn't really read their lips, but they were talking about me. And right in front of you, right in front of me. And they were just staring at me. And it seemed as if they didn't realize that I noticed what they, they were, were judging you in yeah, front of you. It was really weird. And, you know, it was almost like, does she know that like her dress is see through? Like that was almost like what it seemed like, um, you know, could and you, could you see their facial expressions yeah, it or just seemed, so they weren't weird. they weren't being positive. It was weird. They were like snickering. They, they were OK. Um. So anyway, mean girls. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I looked right at them and I stopped what I was doing and I just waved and said, hey. And they were like, <gasps> and then they walked away from each other and I never saw them the rest wow. of the night. But, you know, but and you know what? Like I kept playing and it bothered me. It yeah. kept bothering yeah. me. And even it bothered me so much that I thought about it the next day and I went somewhere to eat. 
Um, this was yesterday, and I met this um, this girl where I was eating. I'd never seen her in my life, and I don't know why. She asked what I did, and I was talking to her, and I brought up those women. Like, wow. why? And uh, anyway, and she's just like, you know what? Some people just cannot handle when you are giving them your all, and it's such an, an amazing like light, and it's an experience that you know, like they wouldn't get anywhere else. They just can't handle it, and they bring it to have, a yeah. dark place. Yeah, that is, and, so, it, and it tends to be typically older people that right, I see that in. Right. My mom Absolutely, lives in a park with a lot of older people, mm -hmm. and some of the jibber jabber is like always negative about yeah, absolutely. you know I don't want to make this podcast intro be all negative. No, 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 but we're we're talking about how you how come you out step that above because it because that's I uh, I'm going to share thing. one more thing and you know who this person is and I won't say their name but um I got done playing a gig or I went on break playing a gig. Did, mm -hmm. did you see that piece of food that just came out? <laughs> As long as it doesn't hit me, I'm cool. I'll try to edit that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I I had got done playing with Matt again. Another mm -hmm. maybe Matt's the problem. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, and we had another person playing with us, and or no, no, that's not what it was. I I got this wrong. Let me start over. There's another situation where this happened to me, where I was playing with somebody and I got off the stage mm -hmm. um, on the break, happy as hell. We had a great yeah. set. And she comes right up to me and she says, I don't like the person you're playing with. I'm like, wow. I said, that's that's very strange because I think he's awesome and the whole place is packed. Everybody right. loves what we're doing. Right. She's like, well, I don't like him. He takes over the show and it's not what I like. And I'm like, well, you know, hmm. I, and I thought, it, actually, I thought of the club owner when I said this. I'm like, well, you can leave. If you don't like it, you don't need to be here. And she was on her way out anyway, and she'd already paid her tab. But it really ruined my whole freaking yeah, night. Yeah, of course. Because of course. why would you ever go up to somebody and just say, no. you suck? Yeah. Why would you? Do I think you just leave. Yeah. And not say a word. I mean, yeah. if I went to Wawa to get a, a coffee, and the guy behind the counter, and I'm like, you know what? You're, you're really ugly. Mm -hmm. You're not attractive. And then I just left. Why would why that would ruin that right. guy's day? Yeah, totally. Why would you do that? Absolutely. And I even wrote this person on Facebook a message and she's never responded to me. I just tried to explain it from where I'm coming from right. as an artist. Right. I had a great thing, musically thing, musically thing. I had a great time playing music. Mm -hmm. I get off the stage mm -hmm. and I'm punched in the face again I know. by somebody that thinks well, their opinion is more important than everybody else's. Well, I mean, but you also have to remember though, we're playing at bars a lot of the time. People are drinking. Of course. Yeah. You know, and who knows if they even remember what they say, you know? Oh yeah. I might've sent that message to her and she doesn't even know that right. anything happened. It's very possible. I didn't even think about that. Well, see, there's another light to be shed on this because that happens to me all just kidding no i, no, <laughs> I, I have no idea I, what I do, I do not live my bar. life like that but i mean it's possible i feel like people they're just kind of uncensored sometimes when sometimes we're in these yeah places. okay so but. with all of that said i'm still a happy person <laughs> my voice cracked on that and it's because um, you're lying just kidding i'm not lying i'm, no, I'm a very not. happy person i'm in a very good place right now I'm very happy to be doing this podcast with you mm -hmm. and, and our friends that come in. We have some great guests coming up. We just have so much this, fun. This spring and summer. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited. Just watch the bloopers. You'll know all, all, oh, all the fun we have. And, you know, this episode is not an, an explicit rating. And some of them will be. But the bloopers definitely will be. Because yeah, I'm, letting, I'm letting all of that go without beeps. Because it makes it, it, it's real life. It's really fun. Yep, so subscribe to Patreon so you can watch it. <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, I hope you really, really, really love this episode. It's awesome. Matt Baxley is just incredible. Um, just a great, 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 super talented musician and just a really cool guy. Yeah, and we so. learn a lot about religion and where he comes from mm -hmm. and his work ethic and all kinds of different things about this just creative person. Yep. So hope you enjoy it. Let's say bye together. We've never done that before. Three, two, one. Bye. bye. That, was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was super funny. Would you like to have access to extra songs from our guests, photo galleries, 
bloopers and outtakes, and behind-the-scenes footage? Well, you can. You can go to patreon.com slash musicstudiolive and select the Backstage Pass tier. It's only $3 a month, and you can have access to every bonus feature from every episode that we have. So, go now and get your Backstage Pass to Music Studio Live. Patreon.com slash Music Studio Live. You're tuned in to Music Studio Live. Well, welcome to the podcast, Matt Baxley. Hi. Hey. How you doing, man? I'm great. How awesome. How you guys doing? Well, Amazing. we just recorded a couple of Matt's songs, and they'll be played throughout the, the rest of the podcast here. Uh, I had a blast. Uh, oh, yeah, it was too. great. And I've had the pleasure intense. of working with you for uh, oh, coming up on a year now. Yeah. Wow, yeah. has it been that long? It's been, it's been a Jeez. year. Yeah. Um. And we we do a, a thing called the Moots, which is based on Matt's name, Moot Booksley, his uh, AKA, if you will, right? Yeah, Moot Booksley. Tell us how that came about. Okay, so uh, this is the story as I remember it, right? So, <laughs> 1998. I'm in high school. Uh, I'm like probably in 10th grade. Me and my friends are like hanging out and just doing stupid things that high school kids do, mm -hmm. like make up silly names for each other. And we like give each other these like business cards with our silly names oh, on funny. it. that's funny. And the one that they came up with me was my friend Jason and my friend Deirdre. And like they, it was Moot Booksley. And I just thought that was like... They just played off your real played name. Played off my real name. But in name. a funny sounding yeah. word. And so yeah. to make it even more ridiculous, I added the, like the umlauts over the yeah, O's, it was kind you of, know? Yeah. And oh, the, yeah. And it's and then like I took a German class and I heard the German teacher pronounce it with the umlauts and I'm like, that sounds stupid. So I got rid of the umlauts. How, how does that sound yeah. with them? It's like meat beaksley, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, that's e. not good. Yeah. That's not good. Funny. No. So on your YouTube page... <laughs> It says, your, your uh, description says, old school style having, funk possessing, record producing, crate digging, gear geeking, knob tweaking, fun loving musician, among other things. And I think that's a perfect description of you. Well, that's cool. I'm glad. What do you dig in crates for? Records. Records. That's crate right? digging. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. You're so young. Well, um, I'm older than him. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Barely. Well, I guess I've been around DJs, and that's a term DJs use. Yeah, a lot I mean, too. I don't know. I guess I don't do so much of that these days. I've yeah. just like been purging my record collection. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, like you get into this like compulsive thing where it's like every time, oh, there's some records. Oh, gotta stop what I'm doing. <laughs> Look through all the records. Yep. It, that's just there's not enough time in the world to listen to all those records. Mm -hmm. So, as a songwriter, um, you've been doing this. For, where'd you grow up? Grow up? Excuse me, I can't talk. Tennessee, East Tennessee. Tennessee. All right. I can hear it in your voice. A oh, bit. yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, you don't completely lose it. And if I go back and visit, like, I'll be talking like that for yeah. two weeks. But oh, fine. So, East Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, what'd your dad do? Uh, he's an electrician. Oh. Yeah. Well, that ties in with the synthesizer. Oh, yeah. And I used to love, like, you know, when I would, like, go. My, my parents split when I was really young, but, like, I, you know, I've always had a good relationship with my dad. But, like, you know, we've, we've stayed in touch and everything, and, like, I would go visit him, and he would, like, show me all of his electrical books and stuff, and I was super into that. I really wanted to do that until I found uh -huh. out there was all this, like, math involved. <laughs> <laughs> like, so. And what, what did your mom do when you were growing up? Um, mom has always been into, like, uh, caregiving, like, taking care of elderly. Okay. Like, she used to uh, take care of all kinds of, like, Alzheimer's patients and okay. stuff like that. Interesting. So yeah. you play a multitude of instruments. Where did that come from? My mom's side, of the, well, really both sides of my family, but my mom's side of the family are all very musical and all very in the church. Like, Oh, okay. so you come from a church background. Oh, hugely, yeah. Okay. Like Pentecostal, Tennessee church. Like, I, you know, I used to snakes play Hammond and stuff? B3 organ. No, oh, no, no. Nice. No snakes? No snakes. <laughs> More like, you know, James Brown, you know. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, so I used to play, you know, Hammond organ and... And like, you that's know, why you're loud. so good at the organ. And what you sing and oh yeah, oh yeah 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 all the stuff that's you know awesome. just very musical family you know my mom plays piano very well and you know a lot of her like brothers and sisters sing yeah so I was around it from the time I was 
Yeah, I, well, my entire family, everybody in our family, I played in my mom's band when I was 14. Yeah, so, so, yeah, cool. it's, I know exactly where you come yeah. from. Maybe that's why we work so well together. How about that? Could be. But you play drums, you play bass, you play... Guitar, sax, trumpet. Sax, trumpet, what? Yeah. I know. Interesting. Pretty much anything, you know. If you go, go out there and get his albums on Spotify, um, or purchase them, not just download them whatever just steal them that's what everybody just steal them well it's not really stealing now it's just subscriptions it's yeah Yeah, i get my you know fair share my point zero 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 six cents it's pretty sad isn't it yeah (laughs) it's there's actually a uh, one royalty that you get that's nothing and then it continues to be point zero zero one, like because the because yeah. the rounding issue. Oh. You ever see that? You ever look at the state where there's like one that's no. just all zeros? Oh boy, just, it's really bizarre. Bandcamp, yeah. Bandcamp's been the only thing that's actually paid me money. Interesting. Yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast and you do hear the air conditioning noise, we decided to leave the air conditioners on and let them come on. I can kind of hear it. It gets. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Welcome to Florida. Oh my God, this chair is going to kill me. Never mind the <sighs> fact that it's January. It's Florida. Yeah, it's yeah hot. I'm going <laughs> to. It's hot. I'm going to take a break and just turn this down because that's really it loud. It was really loud, actually. And. Yeah. Oh. But it feels good. So I'll do some kind of a cut there it of some okay. sort. Okay. It's still kind of loud. It'll turn off in a minute. Yeah. It gives. It needs a second. There it goes. Mm. Wow, that's a big difference. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you grew up in, around music. Yeah. Uh, when did you, because you are one of the first people on YouTube. I think, I think one of your synthesizer videos was one of the first Viwar videos. Am I correct on that? As, as far as like or anything not, involving synthesizers. The ghetto, the ghetto talk box. No, the synthesizer video was first. Oh, okay. That was like 2006. So YouTube was very, beginning. very new. And I just like jumped on it right away. And I'm like, interesting. On a whim, making this, like, I never make this like Goa trance electronic music, but like, yeah. it just on a whim, decided to do that. And next thing you know, like back in those days when YouTube was a very small, in, you know, sort of insular And there were a lot community. of rules back then for YouTube. L- oh, length well, of the video and all yep, that stuff. 100 megabytes, 10 yep. minutes. Yep. I mean, hmm. so it had to be pretty, you know, crap quality, really, to like get it all in there if it was yeah. going to be several minutes long. So I was using some horrible, you know, video editing, like... <laughs> From a high eight camcorder, nice. And oh, so yeah. you know, I mean, like really low res, but that thing ended up on the front page of YouTube, and which back oh. in the day was like that, that was, was like the big time, you know, as big yeah. as you could get on there. So you know, overnight, I'm getting flooded with all of these, you know, notifications, you yeah. know, and I'm at my day job that I used to do, you know, working behind a desk. And, like, I'm thinking my account got hacked or something. Oh, I thought, oh no, okay. something really bad has happened. And then, like, as it started to come in more and more, I noticed, oh, I think I understand what's happening. Because yeah. we couldn't look at it at work. So, wow, yeah, I had to just go through that whole day in suspense. So how many hits in, like, one day? Like 600,000 or something. Wow. But, like, wow. that's a lot. That's for, a lot in you one know, day. Like, it hit, it hit that very quickly. Especially back then. Yeah, yeah. And... I don't remember exactly, like, you know, how much it got to, but it eventually got over a million views. So what does this number mean to you? 6,468,232. Like, total views? Of total views video. as yeah. of this afternoon. <laughs> oh, okay, wow. I, That's pretty good. Yeah, I happened, that happened three times, that whole viral thing. Yeah. So just got lucky, I guess. So what are you making, like, eight bucks a year off of those? <laughs> No, I don't know. I, I don't. You don't have much. to tell me the yeah. exact figure. It's not because a see, that's the thing. It's like thing. when I was hot on YouTube for that, you know, because you have to really keep that momentum going. Right, you, know? you do. And I had some illness and stuff, really bad, you know, and it took me out of the game for a long time. So, well, let's let's yeah. talk about that because I remember, I'm gonna say, ten to twelve years ago, maybe even more, maybe two thousand eight. Two two thousand eight. I met you. Yeah. And. Uh, f- several people had said to me, you need to meet this guy. You guys need to make some music mm-hmm. together. And you were a little aloof. And uh, and I was just kind of like, what's wrong with this guy? Why doesn't he want to make music with me? I have a studio in my home. And, and I won't charge you to record. I want to make some music. 
And I, I think I reached out to you through MySpace or Facebook or something. Oh, wow. It would have been the time for MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> and, um, and you were real vague. And I was like, well, uh, okay, maybe, maybe I gave this guy the wrong opinion or something. But, but now you were going through your own stuff. You were going through some medical issues and stuff. In and out of the hospital all that year. Yeah. And just like, you know. I ended up losing my day job over it because I just couldn't keep working. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had this lung condition. I'm not going to go into it. Having but... a day job's not a, a a good thing sometimes if you want to be a musician. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. totally believe that subconsciously I yeah. manifested that because of the way it all came down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole other topic. But anyway, like that was sort of the catalyst that pushed me out of that comfort zone of having a day job. Mm-hmm. And what that, was it know, exactly that you did? I worked for Collier County uh, uh-huh. in facilities management, manning all of the surveillance cameras for all the, you know, oh, county that's, facilities. You must have seen some interesting that's things. Kinda, oh, we had the. Cool. Oh yeah, we had all kinds of fun, but mostly people having sex <laughs> on the street. <laughs> no, mostly people like running over themselves with their own car in the, in the <laughs> you know. That's awesome. Like drunk people, yeah, coming to court. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Wow. Yeah, we had a file of, like, the silly, you know. What else? What else? So, anyway, that was, like, a very demanding job, but it was kind of a thing that, you know, hang your personality on the coat rack when you go in and, yeah. and mm-hmm. you know, don't really, like, don't be too much of an individual because, you know. That's how most office jobs are. Sure. Yeah. It's, that's oh, yeah. to be understood. You know, any sort of thing, you got to stay with the structure. And I don't do that very well. Yeah. So I feel like it's like subconsciously, I it was like my body found some psychosomatic way mm. of getting me out of the situation. But you were actually, you actually had illnesses. Oh, I've been sickly all my life. You know, just I've had all kinds of stuff. I had tuberculosis when I was 16. Oh, you know. wow. Yeah. So wow. the last few years, I've we've had a lot of talks on our gigs where there's nothing else to do because there's nobody in the club to talk to on the break. <laughs> but um, that's another topic. Um, but the last three years, you said you've you've kind of got your act together on a personal level and medically and uh, you lost some weight. Bunch of weight. Yeah. yeah. Like 50 pounds. 50 pounds of weight. That's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Did you write a song about it? <laughs> No, but I should, right? What is my weight right now? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I know you're a very spiritual person from our talks. Um, does that come from the, your religious background, or is, is it... Okay, well... Explain the, the I will difference. articulate that, yeah. So that's sort of a sticky topic, And I, I want to but... talk about this because your songwriting is reflected heavily on this yeah, situ- well, I've situation? gone through a lot of changes Topic. in that regard. Like, I think what it is, is like if you're a person that is just sort of bent to more of a spiritual worldview, I think some of that like shows itself early in your life. Mm-hmm. And some of us choose to just like ignore it and sort of just go on about our business. Some of us, if like we come up in a religious household, might it that's that's what it's going to be channeled through is the religious, you know. And otherwise, it's like you're kind of left to your own devices to figure all this stuff out. Like, why are we here? What are we, you know, what is this all about? You know, is there a God? Blah, blah, blah. And of course, for me, it's like, there is no other answer. It's what the Bible says, and that's it. And, you know, it's dictated to you very clearly, this is what it is. Yeah. That was you growing up. Yeah. That's what you were taught. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not knocking anybody, you know, who is in religion or anything like that, because I'm I'm very sensitive to that, obviously, mm-hmm. having grown up that way. But just some experiences that I've had over the last few years have... We talk about the universe telling us and giving us signs, and we joke, yeah. a, we yeah. joke a lot about number sequences. I'm that and, way, too. Yeah, mm, so yeah. have you had an out-of-body experience? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the, actually, it was an okay. out-of-body experience like that, that triggered the whole thing that was really? just like, yeah, I felt like it had never, you know, I mean, I had been... I've Did done you write every... a song about it? Yes. <laughs> like, Finally, somebody said <laughs> yes to that <laughs> question. <laughs> Several. It's like all that everything's about now, but in, in, in a roundabout way. No, it's something very profound, like, you know... I've had a lot of depression and whatever throughout my life and pain and whatever. So I've tried every drug there is, you know, you name it. And oh, we on the last podcast that question came up and I said, "Have you done crystal meth?" 
Yes. You have? Wow. Yes. Three times. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Was it fun? It was not. A, I don't know. I see how people get hooked on it, but it wasn't for me. It was just like you know, being super anxious and tense for like eight hours. And like, crystal meth not. is probably an old drug now, but I don't know anything about drugs, so I'm just assuming. That's which one was the best one? Too. Is that a bad question? Mushrooms, probably. Right. I, actually, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised about that. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm not going to advocate for <laughs> I mean, drugs yeah. <laughs> of any sort. But anyway, I think there are things that are beneficial and there are things that are not. More of the natural things, not the chemical things. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, a so lifetime tell us about of your out of body knots. experience. Well, anyway, so this thing was unlike any sort of drug experience I had ever had. It wasn't like anything I could compare it to. And I had had sort of what you would call religious experiences, mystical experiences, whatever, through. The church, you know, that like were very profound and life changing, but hmm. this was a whole different thing. Yeah, I was just sitting on my friend's couch and um, I left my body and I felt myself go out into this like it was it was like you're hovering over the surface of the sun. Wow! And the sun, it was like, the, and it felt like the sun was like this giant engine that runs the universe. Like this is the core of infinity itself like this is creation happening and it was like i felt myself like orbiting this thing and i noticed that like everything i could think of people places things ideas goals i had in life rep were, were also like orbiting this thing wow, oh, wow. and it was like every once That's in a deep. while i would converge with one of these things and it's like okay well it it, it really kind of sent me into this depression because i was like is it all random? Like, you know, no, like there's no plan to any of this. It's just like random. And I, I couldn't attest right. to that. It's just that really broke my brain. If I, if I don't work hard, I won't get success. All yeah. those yeah. kind of stupid things of like, you know, maybe it doesn't mean anything. Maybe it's just like all the connections we have in life are random. Right. But it, gave, it was that was again. Like a pinball machine. That was a catalyst that made me ask that question, and I couldn't stop oh. until I found out. What is this about? Why am I here? So you it's, were on a mission, cetera. not from God, but from the universe. Yeah, whatever you want or to Or whatever call your it. God yeah, is. Yeah, you know. Maybe like... you were roofied. Just kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> I have a side project called Rufy the Dog. That's oh, wow. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Really, really absurd music. You have a lot of side awesome. projects. I, I do. That. I have a lot of music that I make. It's just like kind of silly. Where do you think music comes from? And I only say that because I listened to your other podcast and the guy asked you that. From what was it? The, yeah, uh, and I remember that being a really like a I was kind question. of blown away by this. So this I'm stealing young, his question. That's a great. What was that? Small brain podcast. Yeah, and he's a really young guy. And yeah, I he's that a was smart a dude. Pretty astute question to ask. So where, where do does you it think come music from? comes from? Hmm. Well, here's what. Okay, it's. A, I'm trying to put this in a very distilled way. Like I think that you know there are all of these ideas, these creative ideas and inspiration that is out there in the ether. That we all have access to if we are tuned to it. Hmm. Right. And I feel like if you happen to have skill at an instrument or singing or something, then you can then use that skill to channel this inspiration or whatever and funnel it into something tangible. And it just happens to be music. It might be visual art. It's like any sort of, I feel like That's any kind of creative thing comes from this same source it's mysterious but like it's it's definitely like i feel like this is what happens like when you and i are improvising mm -hmm. and i will go for some ridiculously strange rhythm just on a whim it'll just like mm -hmm. occur to me on a split second and i'll go boop 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 boop, boop. and you do the exact same that thing happens a lot and it happens a lot and we look at each other and it's like what we're just tapping into the same place you yeah. know yeah yeah and I, I feel like that's well. I, I always that, sort of. the way I look at it is is um, as a musician, you have a toolbox and you have a, a, a box of things you can pick from at any given time. It it could be like you're saying in the that's universe out here, you know, and you're picking from it. I I look at it like it's all in here, and this is my my chops. This is my yes. stuff. But when you get to a certain level, a set of those yeah, those chops are the same that other people would have in a certain level. Which, You're right. Yeah. Which I'm I'm glad it took 
eight years or 10 years or whatever for us to finally work together. Yeah. Because I don't know that I would have been at your level back then. You know, and maybe, maybe you weren't at mine. Yeah. Oh, totally not. Yeah. And so I the universe put us together. Oh, yeah. The timing is always perfect. It doesn't matter how chaotic it looks. So I have um, a, a couple questions here from some of your friends. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this ought to be good. Matt Chadra. Okay, cool. He says, do you hey, have Matt. any plans to form a band playing your original compositions? I have a strong desire to see songs like you, You've you Arrived in a live setting. Oh, and I we couldn't good... stop thinking of Matt when we were playing it. Well, we have good news for Matt when he watches this yeah. because that's one of the songs that we recorded. Yeah. <laughs> and it was fun. Yeah, we've talked about that a lot. Matt's a, a cool dude, great multi-instrumentalist up in Illinois, Chicago area. and. Uh, so we just need to learn some more of your yeah. original music. See, there you go, man. Yeah. And so that's what we'll do. Uh, you've arrived, though. Who did you write that about? Was yeah, that, let's talk about that. Was that uh, about yourself? Yeah, what is that about? See, don't you feel like that is like uh, right on the, the brink of being a little narcissistic? Possibly. I've I mean, always felt, yeah. I think it's about your alter ego. It, that's hmm. what I thought. I, I never thought about it in that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I really struggled with that a lot. The whole album that that comes from is called Step Inside My Mind. And mm -hmm. the whole thing was basically, the idea was to let, let, let the deepest part of my subconscious come out. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. like I would just hit record to a click track and just play an instrument and whatever came out, came really? out. Yes. It wow. was all channels. That's yeah. crazy. The whole thing. And then I would just um, go back and sort of tidy up when I fumbled on some words or whatever mm -hmm. and sort of like structure a song and just build an arrangement around that. And that's why it's kind of this weird arrangement you've that arrived. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's totally stream of consciousness. Wow. Wow. And Oof. it's like every bit of it has taken on this really personal significance to me. Mm -hmm. It's like it felt like it was, you know... However you want to interpret it, go ahead. So you didn't write it for somebody about somebody. It uh -uh. just it just Came happened. Out. It was like it felt very much in the moment like a message to me. Mm -hmm. Like this was something but I not needed from to you. hear. Therapy in a way. From the deepest part of myself. You want to call mm -hmm. it your higher self sure. or your, you know, what you know, God. And what year was you know? this? 2013 was Th when that first 13. happened. Yeah. So you were okay. still in your sick uh, phase. Well, in a way, I was very depressed. I was you were in a depression super phase. Super deep depression in 2013. Yeah. Just horrible. Yeah. There was a lot of dark years. And what got you out of that? Yeah. Music? Yeah. Yeah. Music was like this sustaining thing. You know what it was? Like, I think sometimes about like why we have nostalgia for certain things. And I feel like a lot of times, if you look at what was happening around whatever the nostalgic thing is, it's a lot of times it's because it provided a lot of contrast. Like, I was very depressed. Mm -hmm. So music that I was making in that time or listening to in that time feels extra good to me now to, like, right. revisit. Because yeah. my memory of it was, like, it being this huge solace from this dark place I was in. Mm -hmm. It was the only thing that uplifted you. Yeah. yeah. So I think it takes on extra significance sometimes if you're, you know. Sure. Yeah. In, Whatever. What brought you to that dark depression, though? Do you know? You just kind of because he didn't form it, a band or... with me ten years ago. <laughs> yes, I missed the boat, and I just <laughs> kicking. You know, all kinds of stuff. You know, uh, past past wounds from you know living. You know, having a single you know single parent mm -hmm. situation, and um, just all kinds of mental blockages that I couldn't get past, just mm -hmm. things from early on that just kept me really, you know, doing really unhealthy things and like drugs and this is turning 30. This is right. around the 30 mark, right? Around 30, something changed. Yeah. yeah. Something big just lifted. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and play um, You've Arrived. This is a good, good time to, uh, to play that. <laughs> so here's You've Arrived by Moot Booksley also known as Matt Baxley. Music Studio Live presents Matt Baxley, a.k.a. Moot Booksley, with the song You've Arrived.
For more information on Moot Booksley, a.k.a. Matt Baxley, go to his YouTube channel at Moot Booksley, his Instagram at Moot Booksley, or his Facebook at Matt Not Moot. You're tuned in to Music Studio Live. So I think Sarah had a question for you, something about a business card. Go, take it away. Oh, it's not a question. It's oh, a, it's not a question. It's just a funny a little funny story, story because, oh boy, um, maybe seven, six, seven years ago, I met you at the Bay House, possibly. Probably. And I was playing there at the Bay House on other nights, and yep. I heard about you and Mark V and everybody and anyway so I was like I need to go out and just listen to you guys and I remember I met you and I thought you were incredible and I said hey would you mind sometime maybe giving me a keyboard lesson oh (laughs) you know just to kind of you know I I feel like you can always grow, right? (laughs) He's pretty funky. He can give you some funk. So, yeah, totally. So, anyway, so you were like, here's my business card. You know, you can call me anytime. So, I... (laughs) I'm sorry. What? This is hilarious. No, this is already sounding like... Oh, my God. Well, I don't know. I just... I have your... I have kept your business card it's like on my night oh you still have to it. where i sleep like i don't oh, know that's why hilarious. i have six thousand business cards of tons of people but yours is like just right does your husband <laughs> i wake up and i look at it does your husband know that you have matt's yeah business card next cool. to your bed it's cool <laughs> that's not like that's it's really hilarious bad. but anyway i know like i'm turning red talking but, about oh, it. you've never man. called him I never called you. No, I no. no. I was gonna say I, like you never used it. I know. Well, <laughs> I think I put it there because I was like, I need to do this one of these days. One of these days, and just you know, like Man. sit down with you. And but it's just so funny. You know it's like is. on my nightstand. Like, why? Why there? Like why didn't I put it that's on funny. my piano or something in my head? Like no. Or in your music room or something. Right, yeah. Exactly. I suppose that's so, that's, that's funny. I, I mean, I know exactly what your business card looks like. like wow. I don't even know what is it, it looks the, like. Is it the orange looking one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. So, so let's uh, go. Let's go back to songwriting. Okay. I want to know. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> I want to know, because um, I've written an album where I just did the drums first and then put the keyboards on it later. Interesting. And you were just saying that that's kind of, you, you did a keyboard part first and then wrote the song around that. Do you ever hear everything in your head, like a finished product when you sit mm. down to write? Or are, you, or are you just going blind at it? You don't know what it's going to be like at the end? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, it depends. Both, both. Yeah, both. Yeah, it's like there's sometimes when it's when it's a total like this. I really feel like my best stuff happens when I don't feel in that moment very inspired. It seems like a lot of the time, okay. the moment I'm just like just doing it because it's like an like a compulsion to like I just feel like I should just record right now and start playing and singing if it's a guitar or whatever, and. It doesn't feel anything special. I'll just like save it, go to bed. The next day, it's like, what is this? It's like yeah. a surprise, you know? And to me, like, that's when the best stuff happens. Sometimes when it's like I have this gigantic orchestrated thing in my head, which happens a lot, like when I'm driving or in mm-hmm. the shower oh, or yeah. somewhere, where you, where you can't, can't write do it, it down. Yeah. By the time I get to where I can do it, it just yeah. it loses some of the. Cell phones have helped. I, I, oh, I'm, I have tons of notes. Audio notes, oh, geez, me voice too. memos, yeah. I got the four track on here. I just like sing a bunch of harmonies. Oh, you do there. all yeah. the parts oh, on your yeah. phone? <laughs> yeah. That's, cool. That's, cool. That's awesome. So let's talk about uh, what is the time, the other song that we yeah. did. Um, where did that come from? How did that, Now, that was a partnership album, right? That Well, okay, so what happened was Dan, Dan Banks yeah. um, and I were musical partners, songwriting partners, and I had that song... And, okay, first of all, it was kind of like, Matt, I would like you to help me produce my songs and make an album. So it was going to be his record, and I was just going to produce it. But as we collaborated more, we kind of hit it off and just really, like, started writing songs together and just improvising. Basically trying to do, with two people, what I was used to doing by myself, Mm -hmm. a whole stream of consciousness thing and see, you know. And so we wrote some tunes. And it became like, well, why don't we just make it a duo project? So to unify it more and make it more of a duo thing, we sort of brought that tune in that I was already working on Mm -hmm. and made it sort of blend 
But it was already a tune, you know, that I had like in 2007, something like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So what is the song about? What is the time? Yeah. I, uh, no. Come on, Daryl. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, it was, there might not be a whole lot of substance to it necessarily verbally, but I feel like the the vibe, the whole feeling oh, the of it. The vibe is awesome. I love it. The, and I was going for a certain vibe of, of uh, unity, you know, just like how can we all get along and how can we all feel safe and happy. So the just, time is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's just like, well, yeah, if kind of like, I guess my version of like Todd Rundgren's If Not Now, When. There right, you go. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So love let's uh, let's go ahead and play What Is The Time? Uh, in Music Studio Live with Matt Baxley. That's my DJ. Look. <laughs> Baxley. Music Studio Live presents Matt Baxley, a.k.a. Moot Baxley, with his song, What is the Time? What is the time when I can go outside and let the sunshine warm my bones? What is the time when I can feel alright inside my mind when I'm alone? And I'll be safe to walk around along the street Where is a place that I can go to find myself a bad to eat? Hey, am I waiting here in vain for an imaginary trade? Am I chasing now? If I came and knocked upon your door and asked you for some help Would you decline if clearly there was nothing in it for yourself? I am the force of every man and woman, every boy and girl What is the time when we can get along with them? Chasing after dreams that 
be sure and visit our website at musicstudiolive.com. There you'll find all of our social media links. This is Music Studio Live. I guess I'm just kind of curious, like, how did you stop doing drugs and things like that? Like, what was it that <laughs> What was that? What was that? What was it? I used to do drugs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still, I still do. do. but I, I used, used to, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's that from? That's uh, Mitch Hedberg. He, yeah. he died years ago, but oh, he was a funny comedian. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. Basically, that came from the whole spirituality thing that sort of just opened up it just naturally started happening mm -hmm. where like i started to notice like i think the first thing i quit after that was like nicotine like you know i used to yeah. you know on again off again with with nicotine and just like i started to notice that like as soon as i would do it it would it's like bring me down like you know whatever it just you start to become more sensitive to those yeah. things and it just was like this ain't working for me anymore and just like slowly but surely you know same with the weight everything just like as a matter of changing the mind mm -hmm. everything else you know so you lost the weight the just from changing your diet and change and did you exercise not because you much don't seem more yeah you're in the studio all the time like i am yeah i should really exercise more than i do but it, it mostly was just um stopping sodas you know yeah. sugar yeah. sugary of drinks sugar. of any kind yeah. You know, trying to not d do so much of the, you know, junk food, you know, uh, more vegetables. But not anything crazy. Really, well, just you like... You still eat Almond Joys. That's right. I saw I, that. We saw them in your bag. <laughs> I don't believe in resistance. Like, I've tried that my whole life. Yeah. You know, resisting things. You need to just let yourself do and, you know... You know what my big diet cheat is? What? <laughs> And I'm proud of it because I've lost, at this point, 14 pounds. That's great. On Friday nights, late after a gig, or if I'm at the studio and then I go home like at midnight, I'll make a big, huge salad. And it it's, makes me so happy. Oh. It is satisfying, man. <laughs> huh. And that's, I used to hate That's that my stuff. cheat. That's great. Because I don't it's eat after filling, 7. You know? oh, I don't yeah. eat after I 7 mean, anymore during the week. Oh. Or, or, I mean, Friday's the only that's, day I cheat. Mm -mm. I don't know. I, I've got to have chocolate and <laughs> chocolate. Chocolate. Well, you have, you have three kids. You need something, Ice cream. something to go to. You do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Cheeseburgers. Well, Matt, is there anything else that you'd like to, to say on the podcast here? Well, I'm here? curious. Oh, you got more things? I have one, I have one more question. Okay. So we didn't quite finish on you had that out-of-body experience, right? And then you said that you were really curious as to what, why we're here, what's the purpose, things like that. So, are you still exploring that, or have you, have you kind of settled that within yourself? I mean, to to yeah. a great degree, yeah. And, and how did that? Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Very hard, hard things to. It's very hard to unseat a whole belief system and a whole thing that you've put your entire being into, mm -hmm. which was, for me, Christianity as it is taught in the church. And it just, like, to completely just, like, start to have new thoughts that are like, whoa, I this version of me is it's not... It's real hard to have new thoughts. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Most yeah. of... We don't realize how much of everything that we think every day is just recycled not just religion. from the pre... Yeah. Anything from anything. our childhood. Yeah. A lot of stuff is just kind of set in, you know, early on. And so to even be open to trying any mm -hmm. new ideas was, you know, super taboo. And I knew that it would be, boy, it really is a deep subject because it's like I wrote two books like over the last five years. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I totally yeah. forgot. <laughs> where that. So, where yeah. are those? Can One of them is published those? that you, that's okay. on Amazon. Yeah. What's and it called? It's called Blinded by the Light. Okay. Okay. So like that was sort of the beginning of it was like my friend, my friend uh, Rex and I, like we got super deep into this is what led to all of this really. Maybe this is relevant, and maybe you need to insert this No, it this is. Somewhere. I think it is. Um, this is a big chunk of the story. So, like, um, he's a guy who I was working for as an arranger, co-songwriter, whatever. He just kind of had me, like, on retainer, sort of, just being, you know, helping him do music. Mm -hmm. and Produce. Put, you know, yeah. put out music and try to write songs to pitch to different things. And uh, we had done this Christmas album. 
and wrote some original tunes. And they sort of had more of a religious bent to them. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have a great idea. Why don't we start doing some more? I guess he was starting to get more in touch with that. Like earlier in his life, he had been very religious and, you know, I was very religious at the time. And so it was like fairly put, pulling him toward that. Mm -hmm. And so we sort of like both decided to really like dive headfirst into this. Okay. Well, so of course, you know, me and him both being really kind of grandiose, like <laughs> decided we're, let's make a concept album and it's going to be on the book of Revelation. Okay. <laughs> the, the apocalypse. And, you know, oh, wow. Yeah. And so really it didn't take us very long, you know, poking around at this idea to, to realize that, oh, we better like understand what this even says and means. Because Was this before we, or after the out of body experience? This is long before. Okay. This is like, Thank two, this is 2014. <laughs> okay. okay. And yeah, like that. Uh, it became apparent right away that he had completely different ideas about it all because oh, he had wow. been raised in the Catholic Church and they, you know, have different teachings about what happens at the end and all that. So uh, we delved into it really strongly and started finding all this stuff that was really uncomfortable about biblical concepts and doctrines and whatever and ended up writing this whole book about why Paul the Apostle is uh, a bad guy because his stuff doesn't uh, square with the teachings of Christ. Okay. And so that's what the whole book is about. And so, you know, that's why I don't really push it because it's like, it's a it's kind of antagonistic, but it's very scholarly and very well researched. We did whole, you know, we 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 did like online classes at Yale. I mean, like wow. we really, Jeez. yeah, we put wow. all a lot of, of our energy. time. Yes, but it started making me ask more questions than it right. answered for right. me. You know, but it finally made me get down to the nitty gritty of what do I actually believe anyway? Mm -hmm. You know, and so. <laughs> I wandered in the wilderness for a couple of years, feeling like I had just completely walked away from my faith. You know, my, my family thought I was, like, you know, wow. lost and, and just, like, feeling completely like, what do I even know anymore? I don't know about any of it. Yeah. And then this experience happened to me, which made me question even further. Right. But ultimately led me to where I wanted to go to, to begin how, with. How was the book written and how long did it take to do uh, well, the two of us would, like, kind of volley it back and forth, chapter by chapter, and, like, I would do proofreading, and then he would revise, and, like, you know, just back and forth, and it took a couple of years. A couple of years. Wow. And then we wrote a whole second book that isn't quite finished, and it's just life happens, and, you know... Oh, yeah. 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 And I've moved on so much from that line of thinking that it, it's actually very difficult for me now to even get back into that headspace to write. But the second book was a lot more emotionally involved and like it was kind of like we it was in the form of a diary. Oh. And like cool. we kind of made this composite character based upon him and and myself, mm -hmm. like our religious experiences growing up and how, mm -hmm. you know, all the, the stuff that we found wrong or whatever with the church. And, you know, kind of like sort of making this fictionalized version of of how we left that. Telling the story through a third person. Mm -hmm. That's a combo yeah. of you guys. It was going to, you know, I mean, we hopefully we'll finish it sometime. Yeah. But, yeah, it is difficult when you've sort of, you know, you're in a different headspace. Yeah. Well, we've been, speaking of time, we've been trying to get together and record an album of us. And we've set a couple dates and then life happens and you're just like... Uh, we got it. We got it. Well, when season's over and our lives calm down musically a little bit, hopefully we can make make time for that. But Matt, I want to thank you. I want to thank you and thank you, thank sir, you for, so uh, much for being yeah. on the podcast and bringing yeah, your music right. to us. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure. It's great, man. And I promise I'll call you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> and I promise I'll make myself available for us to record. Oh, that would be nice. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Music Studio Live is brought to you in part by Deaf Media Group, Matt Steves Photography, and Sarah Hattica Enterprises. And our tech guru is Brent Billman. Thank you so much for watching our podcast. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel now, and then hit the little bell icon for future updates. 
Music Studio Live is a live performance podcast that also talks with singers, songwriters, and music makers about music, songwriting, and life.